Well, obviously, Nelson is still having fun after 17 years. So it is 50 years from the time that I was first in this building. I came to Columbia as a graduate student 50 years ago, and I was in Low Rotunda in 1963. This is a great space. It is an appropriate space to honor our two honorees this evening for the Deming Cup. I think a very, very large number of global leaders have spoken in, in this particular space, and I think it is appropriate that we honor Ratan Tata and Terry in this space. I've spent many, many times and many hours in this space and have spoken many times in this space. Uh, I can remember introducing Dr. Kissinger in this space when he spoke to the business school in the early 1990s. Uh, about uh, six months ago, I hosted a, uh, uh, or moderated a discussion between Mayor Mike Bloomberg and Jeff Immelt that uh, Keith Sharon helped put to together uh, for a conference. Uh, a couple of months before that, I hosted and moderated a uh, discussion between Mike Bloomberg and uh, Boris Johnson, uh, the Mayor of London, which was uh, an interesting experience. It's one of the first times I've ever seen uh, anybody talk over Mayor Mike Bloomberg, uh, but Mar Boris Johnson managed to do that. Uh, but it's also a space that really is open to the constituency around Columbia. My granddaughter had her graduation ceremony from middle school in this space. So it is a very special place, and I'm delighted that we're honoring uh, my friend and colleague Terry Lundgren this evening in this particular space, which is very much part of my home, and I'm delighted that the Provost is here for, for this event, uh, Provost Coastworth. So, I, uh, I remember in 1990, a group of faculty members came to visit me in the Dean's office and said, uh, we would like you to uh, make an offer to Edward Deming as a distinguished professor at Columbia Business School. And I was persuaded, and in fact, we hired Professor Deming as a distinguished professor to teach at the school. And he taught for about uh, three semesters. And during one of the semesters, my son was in his class. My son was a graduate student at the business school at the time, in 1991. And I remember my son coming home from one of his classes and saying he heard something very profound that day, that Professor Deming said, you can know everything about water and nothing of ice. It sounds very profound. I'm not sure what it means, but, but, but our family's been quoting that phrase for the last 22, 23 years. You can know everything about water and nothing of ice. So my role tonight is to introduce my friend and colleague, Terry Lundgren. And I need to tell you a little bit about Federated Department Stores. I've been on the board of Federated Department Stores since 1991 shortly after the company came out of bankruptcy. And uh, in 1994, uh, Federated Department Stores acquired Macy's and renamed the corporate name to Macy's. So I've been on the board through three chief executive officers, and the longest serving of the three chief executive officers is Terry Lundgren. Uh, Terry became the CEO in February of 2003. Next year, he comes up for his 10th anniversary. In 2005, Terry made an extraordinarily bold decision. He persuaded the board, he persuaded his colleagues that Macy's should acquire the May Company. The May Company was arguably either the largest or the second largest department store chain in the nation. And in one very bold movement, Terry doubled the size of Macy's. And we ended up acquiring the May Company under Terry's leadership. And I want to tell you a little bit about Terry as an individual so that you can understand what the acquisition of the May Company meant and the sort of things that he was compelled to do in order to make this work. So when Terry became Chief Executive Officer in 2003, Macy's had 450 stores. We now have 850 stores. Let me give you some sense of scale. That's 150 million square feet of retail space. 
For people who like to shop, you need to think about this for a minute. 150 million square feet of shopping space. That's 4,000 acres, five times the size of Central Park. That's a lot of merchandise. That's what he's responsible for. When Terry started as CEO, the market capitalization of Macy's was under $5 billion. Today it's approaching $16 billion, more than three time increase. Sales at the time he took over were $15 billion. Today we're approaching $27 billion. At the time that Terry took over as CEO, the company had 113,000 employees. Today the company has 175,000 employees. Macy's is the largest volume seller of most of the major brands in the nation. The largest seller of Ralph Lauren, of Esther Lauder, of MAC Cosmetics, of Coach, of Calvin Klein, of Michael Coors, of Tommy Hilfiger, and I know I've left out some vendors, but Terry will correct me when he comes up to speak. What is the story behind these numbers? Let me tell you a little bit about Terry. How did he get Macy's to where it is today? First, we must understand that Macy's is Macy's and includes Bloomingdale's. Bloomingdale's is a wholly owned company of Macy's. Both these brands are iconic brands in the United States. They're not well-known brands. They are iconic brands in the US. We need to understand that everybody is a customer of either Macy's or Bloomingdale's. Everybody in this room has at one point in their lives shopped at either Bloomingdale's or Macy's or Macy's and Bloomingdale's. You may have been there five times, 20 times, 50 times. You went there as a child, you went there as a teenager, you went there as a young adult, you went there as a young married, you went there as a parent, you went there as a grandparent. Everybody in this room has at one time or another been a customer of Macy's and Bloomingdale's. We hope you're also customers of Macy's and Bloomingdale's. So this is what Terry Lundgren is responsible for. He's responsible for two iconic brands that also happen to be a fabulous business that provide permanent jobs to 180,000 people and seasonal jobs to about 80,000 people. What is it about Terry? Well, for him, it's about the stores, it's about the fashion, it's about the prices, the inventory, the advertising, the marketing, the coupons. But above all else, it is about the people, his people, his colleagues. I meet with Terry at least once or twice a month at a board meeting, at a committee meeting, or one-on-one. -on -one. I've never seen him flustered. I've never seen him rushed. He is always attentive. He is always agreeable. He likes people. Every year, the board usually goes on two store tours. So we arrive at the store, whether it's in Los Angeles or in New York or in Chicago, the board, senior management, and Terry leads us into the store. Three minutes after we've walked into the store, we can't find Terry. Where is he? He's standing on the side with a group of sales associates, four, five, six young people in their 20s or early 30s. He's talking to them about how's business today? Do you like the product that you're selling? How are the customers responding? It turns out that people come around him. People like to be with Terry Lundgren. He connects. He has an essential human touch. He has that unique attribute of empathy. What is it that distinguishes him as a leader? Now, I spent a long time on a university campus, nearly 40 years. I spent a lot of time talking about leadership. I'm not going to talk about conventional leadership. I'm going to talk about the kind of leadership that Terry Lundgren brings to Macy's. What differentiates him from many other CEOs? Four things. The first is his, his passion, his enthusiasm, his drive, his energy. Whatever he does, he does full out. Terry understands that the difference between 90% and 100% is not 10%. It's the difference between success and failure. 
whether it's at Macy's, whether it's being with his family, with his wife Tina, with his two daughters, whether it's about playing golf, whether it's running with Tina in the park and trying very hard to keep up and never making it. Whatever he does, he does with an enormous amount of passion, enthusiasm, drive, and energy. The second thing is that Terry is a team builder. He surrounds himself with talented people. He tries to surround himself with people that are even more talented than he is. He builds people around him, and they build him all the time. This is a really wonderful cycle for us to watch. I think the single thing that most, for the board, most gives us confidence in Terry's leadership is the people that he has around him. They've been there for a long time. They have grown with him, and he has grown with them. The third thing that differentiates Terry is that he's bold. He makes big calls. He has excellent judgment. I'm sure he makes lots of mistakes, but the big calls he makes right. The big call to acquire the May Company and then to do something extraordinary, to change the name of all the chains in the May Company. They were family names. Those chains had been created in particular cities in different geographies of the United States. The families who established those stores were still living in those cities. Terry came in and he persuaded them that we needed to change all those nameplates to Macy's or to Bloomingdale's in order to create a national brand. That was a very bold decision, and a lot of people were critical of it, but it was the right call. He makes the big calls right. I know that he had to deal with the mayors of some cities in order to persuade them to support the decision to change the nameplates of some of these family chains. The final thing that I think distinguishes Terry is he has a, a great capacity for articulating a vision that is understandable, that his colleagues can buy into, that he can actually push all the way through the organization. He's able to take a vision and turn it into a strategy and then to execute that strategy. Macy's has been about fantastic execution. One thing after another has been executed appropriately, executed to plan, executed to strategy. He has the capacity to fly at 50,000 feet, but trust me, he's also in the weeds much of the time. So he really spans from 50,000 down to the weeds. Now we all know that retailing is a 24 hour a day business, 365 days a year. The stores, the warehouses, the inventory, the online, in spite of all these demands and all the travel and the number of stores that he has to visit every year, it's astounding. In spite of all these demands, Terry manages to spend time with his beautiful wife, Tina, who is with us this evening, and with his two daughters. I know that last week, he and Tina took a train to Philadelphia to have dinner with one of his daughters. And that tells you something about the fact that he's able to balance an outstanding role as CEO and chairman and his personal life and family life. He's passionate about golf, and as I say, he's now become a runner, but I can't see him keeping up with Tina in the foreseeable future. I understand that she recently did a uh, triathlon. Uh, so it is my pleasure and privilege this evening and honor to present Terry Lundgren for the Deming Cup. Terry is a friend and he is a colleague. When Hollywood makes the next movie about Macy's, the studio director will come to Herald Square, the main Macy's store, a million square feet. He or she will go up to the 13th floor, to the head office, to Terry's office. They will walk into Terry's office. They will have one look at him and say, wow, that's the star. That's my lead. That's the man that is truly made for this part. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend and colleague, Terry Lundgren, and I thank Columbia Business School for inviting me to do this this evening.